Richard Simon's here. He should really sing. <laughs> Just happy birthday, Simon. Oh, Simon's here. Simon's here. I've been trying to think which one will work. Just happy birthday to NHS. Happy birthday, NHS. Happy birthday, NHS. Happy birthday. That was just the practice. Okay, this is the real. Are the kids born? I want to. As we heard in the song, happy birthday to our NHS, and I'm very, very proud here to be speaking, uh, representing the uh, trade union movement here in North East Derbyshire uh, at this 69th birthday celebration for the NHS. Now, we as trade unionists here in North Derbyshire have, have on many occasions stood shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with health workers, um, junior doctors, ambulance workers, nurses, midwives, when they've had to take action in defence of our NHS. and. Um, they do a fantastic job and we're really proud to have stood with you and continue to stand with you. Now, as Val said in her introduction, on its 69th birthday, our NHS faces a crisis, a crisis of underfunding and of privatisation. And that's a really acute crisis. Today is a celebration of 69 years of the NHS, everything it does, but it's also uh, an occasion to really bring to notice the crisis of, uh, of underfunding and of privatisation in our, in our NHS. And here in Derbyshire, over recent months, we've seen a whole number of proposals to cut beds, to cut community hospitals across the county. Um, and we know that here at the Royal, staff in department and department after, uh, after department here at the Royal have to work under huge pressure, pressures of understaffing, real, real pressures on finances here in the Royal to continue to deliver the sort of service that we as a community depend on. And part of what we're doing here today is paying absolute credit to all of the NHS staff who work here at the Royal and across the country in our NHS who continue under these very, very difficult circumstances to deliver these, uh, um, uh, to deliver those services to our community. Now, it's a complete and utter scandal that NHS staff find their pay, find their wages squeezed by the imposition of a so-called pay cap. And it's even worse that those Tory MPs who voted to impose that pay cap have also just voted to pay themselves an 11% pay rise. And I think we were all pretty horrified the other day to hear and see the sight of Tory MPs who had just voted down an amendment in Parliament, an amendment that would have taken away the pay cap for public sector workers, including, including health workers, to see them laughing and joking on the floor of the House as effectively they voted to impose further pay caps on NHS staff. And that's absolutely shocking that we that we saw that. Uh, uh, and our key demand here is that that pay cap should be lifted and NHS staff, all NHS staff who provide a vital, vital job in our hospitals should be paid a decent wage for the work that they do, that we need a properly funded NHS that pays those, pays those wages. Now, I want to pay a particular debt of gratitude to one particular group of NHS workers and I think just need, need some particular mention and those are those many many NHS workers who come from overseas to work in our health service here in this country here at the Royal and across uh, the NHS and at a time when racist right-wing voices seek to divide our communities I think we have to say very very loudly and very clearly that migrant workers in our NHS play, play an invaluable role in supporting and sustaining our health service. In fact, our health service couldn't survive without the contribution of those workers from overseas who work in our health service. And therefore, it's absolutely important that we, we publicly value those workers and say very loud and very clear that migrant workers in our NHS are welcome here. And particularly, I want to reiterate a key demand of the trade union movement that all EU citizens in this country many of whom work in this hospital, work for our NHS, provide vital services to our, who hold EU citizenship, they need to be guaranteed full rights after Brexit. And it's an absolute shame, absolute crying shame, a scandal that our government continues to use these people as bargaining chips in the negotiating process. Our demand should absolutely, they should be granted full and unconditional rights now. And that's a really important thing to say. Lastly, I want to send 
a particular solidarity greeting to another particular group of NHS workers today on this day. And those are to the NHS workers and ancillary staff employed by the privatised company Serco, who are today taking strike action in East London in defence of their conditions and jobs. Now, Serco is one of the privatised companies that's, that's, that's taken over the running of a whole range of ancillary catering and other services inside our NHS. And what they do, effectively, is drive down the pay and conditions of those workers. That's what they're trying to do with workers in East London, to cut their pay and to drive their pay down. And those workers are taking action, and I think we should send a big message of solidarity and support to those workers who today are taking the action in defence of, of their pay, but also in defence of our NHS. And if the government is deaf to demands for the lifting of the pay cap, uh, for the ending of pay, pay restraint and for the lifting of the 1% pay cap on NHS workers. If NHS workers do have to take action, and we know they do so incredibly reluctantly, they do, we as a trade union group will stand beside them once again. So thank you very much, and once again, happy birthday to our NHS. Thank you.